I am Manil Kumar sharing with you an excellent question on maximum and minimum of a trigonometric function. The question here is find the maximum and minimum value of 1 over 3 plus cos theta plus square root 2 sine theta. I would like you to pause the video, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Now when you look at this function, uh, one of the approach could be that this part which is cos theta plus square root 2 sine theta could be written in terms of either cosine or sine function right so uh, we will work on this part now so we can say let's work on cos theta plus square root of 2 sine theta now think about a triangle which uh, let me create here one so that we understand the concept what we are trying to do and how do we get our result, right? So let's consider a triangle here. We are given a value cos theta plus square root 2 sine theta. The coefficient of cos is 1. I'm writing 1 here. Coefficient of sine is square root 2. I'm writing square root 2. If this is a right angle triangle, what should be the value of the hypotenuse? It will be 1 square plus square root 2 square square root. 1 plus 2 is 3. So we get this value as square root of 3. Correct? Now, if I consider this angle to be alpha, in that case, we could write cos of alpha as 1 over square root 3, right? So, we could say that cos of alpha is equal to 1 over square root 3, right? Or Or we could say 1 is equal to 3 cos alpha. Does it make sense? Similarly, for this particular triangle, we can say sine of alpha is a positive over hypotenuse, which is square root 2 over square root 3. Now, so from here, cross multiplying, we can say square root 3 sine alpha is equal to square root 2. Perfect. So, do you see what we did? We kind of got the values for square root 2 and 1. Now, we'll, we can rewrite our function, which is cos theta plus square root 2 sine theta as what? Cos theta plus square root 2 sine theta can now be written as, since this is 1 and 1 is 3 Sorry, this was uh, square root 3, 1 over square root 3. So, so it is square root 3 cos of alpha. Correct? Oh, sorry, we'll rewrite this. Now, this coefficient is 1. So, I could write this as square root 3 cos of alpha for 1 and then cos theta. Square root 2, I'm replacing by square root 3 sine alpha. This is plus in between. Square root 3 sine alpha times sine theta. So by doing so, what have we done? We have got a form of cos alpha minus theta or cos theta minus alpha. Do you see that part, right? So if I take square root 3 common, I get cos of alpha, cos of theta plus sine of alpha, sine of theta. Perfect. Now that is using compound angle formula. We can write this as cos of theta minus alpha, right? You could write this as alpha minus theta also, but cos of minus theta is cos theta, right? So either way. Normally we write theta first, normally, right? So okay, anyway. So that is how we could actually rewrite the these two terms in the denominator. Do you see that? So the concept here is, which most of you might have learned, is if you are given an equation of a cos theta plus b sine theta, in that case, we could always write this as r of cos alpha times cos theta plus r of sine alpha plus sine theta where r is equals to square root of a square plus b square square root. 
Correct? R value could be both positive and negative. Right? Okay. So let's take positive. So that is what we did. And this is the concept behind. So in our case, we got the value of R as 1. So we got the value of R as equals to square root of 1 square plus square root of 2 square, right? Square root, which gave us square root of 3. Is that clear to you? So that is how we got square root 3 cos alpha, right? So this is the uh, cos A part, right? And this is the B part. Do you see that? So that is how we have got our equation. Now, for many of you, this may be a standard process, but for some, it may not be. And therefore, I have made this derivation, right? Okay, now let's look into our function, which is 1 over 3 cos theta plus square root 2 sine theta. So now, I could write this particular function, which is 1 over 3 plus cos theta plus square root of 2 sine theta as equal to 1 over 3 plus cos of theta minus alpha. Is it okay? Now, some of you might think, well, I should have written alpha minus theta. But remember this, cos of minus theta is equals to cos theta, right? So, even if you interchange, it doesn't really matter, correct? Okay. Now, we got this particular function. Now, easily, you can figure out what is the maximum and minimum value for this particular function, right? So, as far as cos theta minus alpha is concerned, its value could be between minus 1 and plus 1. Correct? Now, to get the maximum value, what should you do? And for many more value, what should you do? For getting the maximum value, denominator should be high or low. What should it be? Well, it should be very low, right? Lower. So we'll use minus 1 here to get the maximum value. So for maximum value, we'll use minus 1 for cos theta minus alpha. So we get 3. Uh, we forgot to write square root 3 the square root 3. So, sorry for that. So, we have square root 3 actually here, right? So, that is it. And if we have square root 3 cos theta, then square root 3 cos of theta minus alpha will have the values between minus square root 3 and plus square root 3, correct? So, in this function, the maximum and minimum values with square root 3 will be square root 3 times this, right? So, because all this was square root 3 right there. Okay. So, for the maximum value, we'll take minus square root 3. And for minimum value, we'll take 3 plus square root 3. Correct? So, that is how we are going to get maximum and the minimum value for the given function. Now, sometimes in multiple choice questions, these values may be rationalized and then written. Right? So, you could rationalize this, and if you rationalize, you get 3 plus square root 3 in the numerator, multiplying with 3 plus square root 3, both numerator and denominator, and the denominator will be 3 square minus square root 3 square, 9 minus 3 is 6, and the minimum value will be 3 minus square root 3 divided by 6. Right? So, either one of them could be as a choice in multiple choice question if asked for. Perfect. So let's try to understand this. What we really did was we wrote cos theta plus square root 2 sine theta as cos of, so we wrote here cos theta plus square root of 2 sine theta as r times cos of theta minus alpha, right? Where r was equal to square root of 1 square plus square root 2 square, right? These are the shortcuts. Is that okay? Now, since we are only interested in maximum and minimum, not finding the angle alpha, so we didn't go another step to find the value of alpha. Is That's important to understand, correct? So we just went up to this, and so we said, well, the value of r could be plus and minus of this, which is square root of 3. Now, these are the two extreme values. So you could substitute plus 3 or minus 3. In the denominator, 
Lower denominator means you get higher value, right? You are dividing by a lower number. So minus square root 3 gives you a maximum and plus square root 3 gives you a minimum. At times it is rationalized and written as shown here in green. So we multiply and divide by the conjugate of the denominator to get that answer. So that is how we are going to solve such a question. I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Feel free to write your comments, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that'd be great. Thanks for watching and all the best.